2015, President Obama attempted to begin normalizing relations with Cuba by reopening the U.S. Embassy in Havana and easing travel restrictions to Cuba. Thus, the idea was born to be one of the first to sail to Cuba by a sailboat since the embargo 60 years ago. This is a video about nine crazy guys who crammed onto a 44-foot catamaran to go visit Cuba. The trip was actually made in January of 2016, but I am my own worst critic and I hate editing video, but it seems to me that the only other videos of Cuba that I have seen so far leaves one with the impression that Havana is the only place there is and it is only full of classic cars and happy people. I have no reason to believe much has changed in the past four years, so I hope to show something different and of interest. The journey begins in St. Petersburg, Florida, where the catamaran Adagio was picked up by my father and his friend Daryl, who are both qualified sailing captains. From there, they sailed to Key West, Florida, where the rest of the adventurers boarded. We motored overnight to Fort Jefferson, which is a well-preserved Civil War relic maintained by the National Park Service. I highly recommend visiting Fort Jefferson if you have any interest in history and the unusual. It is a very remote, out of the way place to visit and seems to be an unlikely place to have a fort like this on the face of it, which makes it all the more interesting to me. There we stayed for half a day before moving on and starting our actual leg to Cuba. The waters of the Caribbean were a bit rough, but we did get a bit of sleep on the 12 hour overnight trip. Upon arrival in Cuban waters and after some confusion and concern about the weather and the narrow channel to the destination port, we finally arrived at Hemingway Harbor. Yes, that Hemingway, as in Ernest Hemingway. Apparently, Ernest and Castro were good buds, their commonality being the plight of the little guy. There's even a bar named after Hemingway at the harbor called Papa's, Papa being the nickname given to Ernest by the Cuban people. The visa process upon arrival was very quick. They stamped our passports, took a picture, and let us in to go about exploring. And after finding our mooring and a short exploration of our immediate environs, we got a couple of taxis, one of which was in this Soviet-era made Lada. And we went to exchange our dollars into Cuban pesos and proceeded to head to downtown Havana. Here is the Capitol building, which appeared to be under some renovation at the time. And here are some apartments across the street from the Capitol building. Originally, I took this picture because I thought it seemed out of place, and I researched it after getting home, and apparently, Kid Chocolate, whose name was Eligio Sardinius Montalvo, is a famous boxer back in the 1930s, huge, and this is an indoor sports complex named after him as a part of the Pan American Games in 1991. And we eventually made it to Classic Car Row, Pretty much all of the classic cars you see are taxis, and despite the embargo, you can see they are pretty well maintained, some more than others. Typically, the owners of these taxis took out a loan to buy them from the previous owner. It is a, considered a business investment for the driver slash owner. Next stop is Moro Castle. Moro Castle is a fortress guarding the entrance to Havana Bay. The short version is it was built in 1589 in response to raids on the harbor. 
It protected the mouth of the harbor with a chain being strung across the water to the fort at La Punta. Morro Castle appears in the movie Ghost Breakers, which was filmed in 1940. It appears in the background as Bob Hope and Paulette Goddard enter the harbor by ship. It also appears in the climactic scenes from The Big Doodle, which was filmed in 1957, starring Errol Flynn. And lastly, the Castro regime imprisoned the Cuban poet and novelist Reynaldo Arenas at El Morro Castle for criticism of the government. The film version of Arenas' autobiography, Before Night Falls, which was filmed in 2000, starring Javier Bardem, features scenes set in the castle. However, a fortress in Mexico City doubled for the prison since the filmmakers were not allowed to film in Cuba. And from Moro Castle, we traveled west to the cemetery Cristobal Colon. Another name I am afraid I will butcher, so I give the English version, I think. It was founded in 1876 and named for Christopher Columbus. It is noted for its many elaborately sculpted memorials, and it is estimated to have more than 500 major mausoleums. And with more than 800,000 graves and 1 million internments, Space in the Cologne Cemetery is currently at a premium and as such, after three years, remains are removed from their tombs, boxed, and placed in a storage building. That's something I found interesting. Also buried here are one Canadian and two British Commonwealth servicemen from World War I and World War II, and they are commemorated by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. And to round out the day, on our way back to the boat for the evening, we stopped at the U.S. Embassy briefly to take pictures. Across the street is the Wall of Flags. But this day there were no flags. But why this Wall of Flags, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. The condensed version is, in 1961, the U.S. Embassy was shut down until 1977, when each government signed an Interests Sections Agreement. This permitted each government to operate out of its former embassy in Havana and Washington, D.C. These buildings were called interest sections, not embassies, mind you. In 2006, the Bush administration had secretly installed a scrolling digital ticker with five-foot-tall letters. This ticker was then used to display the local news as well as the U.S.'s own messages that Fidel Castro probably would not like. And thus, the Wall of Flags was made by the Cuban government. And to conclude this story, in 2009, President Obama had the ticker turned off. And then back to the boat. The next day, our goal was the town of Matanzas. It is approximately 90 kilometers east of Havana. My father and his photographer friend, Doug Henderson, had made a trip to West Africa a few years prior in search of old slave castles where slaves were bought, sold, and transported through. They took many pictures. Some of those pictures caught the attention of the Smithsonian Institute. And there are not many pictures documenting these old castles throughout the world. And there is an old fortress in Matanzas by the name of San Severino Castle. It was a slave castle during the slave trade. And Doug and Dad wanted to capture images of this particular castle in Matanzas. Matanzas is the capital of the Cuban province of the same name. It is known for its poets, culture, and Afro-Cuban folklore. Matanzas is also known as the City of Bridges where it has 17 bridges that cross the three rivers that traverse through the city. It is also known as the birthplace of the music and dance traditions rumba and danzón. 
And it is also the birthplace of many historical people that some of the more contemporary names are mixed martial artist Hector Lombard, light heavyweight boxer Luis Garcia, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz's father, Rafael Cruz, was born there. And lastly, the artist of many different mediums, Maria Magdalena Campos Pons, was also born there. And we finally made it to the castle. There's not a whole lot to it. It is maintained well enough. This is a image of the courtyard, centrally located in the castle. And uh, one of the jail cells, I presume. There's a museum inside, in the front of the castle, but I do not remember seeing a lot of information on the past as it pertains to slavery. And then here is more of the city across the bay. This is also a port town, by the way. And that's it for San Severino and Matanzas. We slowly started making our way back to Havana on the highway, and we decided to take the back road as much as possible to see what we might run into. Yes, that is a horse you just saw. And as we were driving the back roads, we saw this gentleman doing some repair work on his carriage. He clipped his welding equipment into the nearest junction box on the public power supply and proceeded to make repairs. Obviously, some folks here are just as capable of irreverence as anywhere else. And day three, our last full day in Cuba. Of course, we would have to go to tobacco country, and that would be the province of Piñar del Rio. So as proper explorers, the back roads we went once again, because that is where the interesting things usually happen.
forget why we stopped, but we ended up seeing this farmer who let us ogle him, and he stood still long enough for Dad and Doug to take pictures. He was very nice. I know I'd be a little weirded out by strangers wanting to take pictures of me. And eventually we realized we had made it to the edges of tobacco country and we stopped at the first farm we could find. And this family was nice enough to entertain us for a short period. We spoke to them in English. They spoke to us in Spanish. No one really understood anybody. There was no meaningful conversation, but we still had a good time. They were very hospitable and rolled each of us a cigar and offered us some of their cooked plantains. And then a stop for some lunch. We were just outside of the town of Vinales when we stopped. The meal was quite good. I wish I could remember the name of the restaurant so I could recommend it. We did meet a nice Australian family there who were also there for the cigars. And straight to Pinar del Rio where we went to one of the major tobacco growers. This is inside one of the barns where the tobacco leaves are hung and dried as you can see not much to it. It was raining hard outside for a long time while we were there. I couldn't get much footage outside. But uh, here we bought some cigars and they put on a hard sales tactic explaining they are award-winning and they showed us articles in a magazine they had. It kind of reminded me of some scammers that tried to sell me electronics equipment out of the back of a van once. At any rate, they had a proper stamp, the stickers, labeling them for government approval for sale of their cigars and, and export, for what it's worth. It just struck me as strange that they would have to hard sell me for world famous Cuban cigars. I guess maybe they were competing with others around the province. And we headed straight back to Havana on the A4 highway. It was about an hour and a half drive back to the boat. And that's it. That is Cuba as I saw it. There is more to comment on about our trip. I could use the experiences and input from the rest of the guys, but I didn't want this video to be too long. As you can see, we were there for the rainy season. The days were mostly overcast with a few rare moments of blue sky peeking through. The boat trip back to Florida was much nicer, but our overall experience in Cuba was pleasant. Very slow internet speeds were the worst of our experiences. We slept on our boat and had excellent electricity, air conditioning, and plumbing. Everybody we came into contact with was very nice. At one point we accidentally ran a red light and we were pulled over by the police. The officer realized we spoke little Spanish and he spoke no English. They looked at us like it was not worth the trouble. So he let us go. I kind of expected a bit more of a hard time from the police officer being that they are part of an authoritarian regime and all. Most modern Americans only think of Cuba in relation to Cold War events such as Castro's revolution, the Missile Crisis, and the Bay of Pigs invasion. I was not as prepared going into this trip as I would have liked. It was a last minute decision for me, really. I wish I had researched more before I left. I think I would have gotten more out of it. But that being said, there's a lot of history and culture there. But I really hope that the U.S. government opens up and allows trade with and travel to Cuba. 
and the sooner the better. I really think that the Cuban people can gain a lot from being so close to the U.S. Cuba is only 90 miles from Key West after all. At any rate, I learned a lot from this trip, both during and after, and I hope you gained something from this video as well. Thanks for watching.